The Secret Teachings of All Ages, by Manly P. Hall, Chapter 8, The Orphic Mysteries, Orpheus, the Thracian Bard, the great initiator of the Greeks, ceased to be known as a man and was celebrated as a divinity several centuries before the Christian era, as to Orpheus himself, writes Thomas Taylor. Scarcely a vestige of his life is to be found amongst the immense ruins of time, for, who has ever been able to affirm anything with certainty of his origin, his age, his country, and condition, this alone may be depended on, from general assent, that there formerly lived a person, named Orpheus, who was the founder of theology among the Greeks, the institutor of their lives and morals, the first of prophets, and the prince of poets himself the offspring of Muse, who taught their Greeks their sacred rites and mysteries, and from whose wisdom, as from a perennial and abundant fountain, the divine Muse of Homer and the sublime theology of Pythagoras and Plato flowed. See the mystical hymns of Orpheus. Orpheus was founder of the Grecian mythological system which he used as the medium for the promulgation of his philosophical doctrines. The origin of his philosophy is uncertain. He may have got it from the Brahmins. There being legends to the effect that he got it was a Hindu, his name possibly being derived from Rafan of meaning dark, Orpheus was initiated into the Egyptian mysteries, from which he secured extensive knowledge of magic, astrology, sorcery, and medicine. The mysteries of their Kabiri at Samothrace were also conferred upon him, and these undoubtedly contributed to his knowledge of medicine and music. The romance of Orpheus and Eurydice is one of the tragic episodes of Greek mythology and apparently constitutes the outstanding feature of the Orphic rite. Eurydice, in her attempt to escape from a villain seeking to seduce her, died from there. Venom of a poisonous serpent which stung her in the heel. Orpheus, penetrating to the very heart of their underworld, so charmed Pluto and Persephone with the beauty of his music that they agreed to permit Eurydice to return to life if Orpheus could lead her back to the sphere of the living without once looking round to see if she were following. So great was his fear, however, that she would stray from him that he turned his head, and Eurydice with a heartbroken cry was swept back into the land of death. Orpheus wandered the earth for a while disconsolate and there are several conflicting accounts of their manner of his death. Some declare that he was slain by a bolt of lightning, others, that failing to save his beloved Eurydice, he committed suicide. The generally accepted version of his death, however, is that he was torn to pieces by Cyconian women whose advances he had spurned. In the tenth book of Plato's Republic it is declared that, because of his sad fate at the hands of women, the soul that had once been Orpheus, upon being destined to live again in the physical world, chose rather to return in the body of a swan than be born of woman. The head of Orpheus, after being torn from his body, was cast with his lyre into the river Hebrus, down which it floated to the sea, where, wedging in a cleft in a rock, it gave oracles for many years. The lyre, after being stolen from its shrine and working the destruction of their thief, was picked up by the gods and fashioned into a constellation. Orpheus has long been sung as the patron of music. On his seventh string lyre he played such perfect harmonies that the gods themselves were moved to acclaim his power. When he touched the strings of his instrument the birds and beasts gathered about him, and as he wandered through the forest his enchanting melodies caused even the ancient trees with mighty effort to draw their gnarled roots from out the earth and follow him. Orpheus is one of the many immortals who have sacrificed themselves that mankind might have the wisdom of the gods. By the symbolism of his music he communicated their divine secrets to humanity, and several authors have declared that the gods, though loving him, feared that he would overthrow their kingdom and therefore reluctantly encompassed his destruction. As time passed on the historical Orpheus became hopelessly confounded with the doctrine he represented and eventually became the symbol of the Greek school of the ancient wisdom. Thus, Orpheus was declared to be the son of Apollo, the divine and perfect truth, and Calliope, the muse of harmony and rhythm. In other words, Orpheus is the secret doctrine, Apollo revealed through music, Calliope, Eurydice is humanity dead from the sting of the serpent of false knowledge and imprisoned in the underworld of ignorance. In this allegory Orpheus signifies theology, 
which wins her from there. King of the Dead but fails to accomplish her resurrection because it falsely estimates and mistrusts the innate understanding within the human soul. The Sikonian women who tore Orpheus slim from limb symbolize the various contending theological factions which destroy the body of truth. They cannot accomplish this, however, until their discordant cries drown out the harmony drawn by Orpheus from his magic lyre. The head of Orpheus signifies the esoteric doctrines of his cult. These doctrines continue to live and speak even after his body, the cult, has been destroyed. The lyre is the secret teaching of Orpheus. The seven strings are the seven divine truths which are the keys to universal knowledge. The differing accounts of his death represent the various means used to destroy the secret teachings. Wisdom can die in many ways at the same time. The allegory of Orpheus incarnating in the white swan merely signifies that the spiritual truths he promulgated will continue and will be taught by the illumined initiates of all future ages. The swan is the symbol of the initiates of the mysteries. It is a symbol also of the divine power which is the progenitor of the world.